cool so what i'm doing right now is i'm checking my audio if you see me blank i'm just checking that in a second give me a about 10 seconds it takes usually 10 seconds to go through i can hear myself perfect let me set everything up i'm almost just getting started so give me a second everyone <coughs> what happened behind the scenes was i had to expire my open ai api key because i had i think shared it somewhere so i was like in a bit of a rush that's that's a new rush new scare right you expose your open ai api key hey anirudh uh, thanks for joining us Welcome back, everyone. Uh, so, what we're doing today is we're continuing the NLP study group, and I'm covering more papers. We started off by reading the Hugging Face book, but since then I've discovered LLMs and sort of gone off on a complete tangent of sharing them and covering them. So that's what we plan to do today. Uh, I'm also happy to run this app as a demo. I was thinking of doing a demo of Archive Chat. Uh, if you don't know, I shared this demo on Twitter where I basically made a very simple app. where you can drop in a link to archive papers and ask questions about it using chat gpt and it was like a v- night hack project where basically i had put it all together overnight and i didn't expect it to like uh, be of interest to so many people so this was an afterthought where i shared um the code if you all want to run this it's like a really simple app um, so i was planning to just mention that to everyone since a few people asked for uh, the code you can find it there it's it's really simple um what the app is doing is it's just taking in the pdf uh, i'm using this package py pdf to convert it into text and then i'm storing the text and asking questions based on it and for that i'm using h2 way which lets me ask questions So once I've stored that, I simply call Chat GPT and ask questions based on it. That's pretty much it. Um, nothing, nothing special. It's it's like barely more than hundred lines of code. Really, really short uh, code file as well. That's not what you're here for. You're here to learn about hugging GPT. I'm sure you've seen the title. So the plan is to cover this paper, and for today, I'll also give you a live demo of the code. I'll also uh, basically read through the code. I'll give my comments of what they're actually doing. and if this is the first time you're joining us what i do to structure these is i usually give a summary in the first 5 minutes so you can watch the first 5 minutes decide if this paper is of interest to you after that i go into depth cover the paper point out different comments different sections from it so i literally like read through the paper i have usually read through most of the papers i cover a few times so for this paper i read it like four times today i think as preparation and i have my notes here so what happens is i point out the sections and i refer my notes so it's like i'm not reading it live but i'm reading it with you and pointing stuff out to you that's how this sex, uh, this live stream is su- structured so here's the uh, short version in the first 5 minutes i'll give you a summary and i hope we'll uh, see th- through this to the end here's the context of the paper the hypothesis is large language models and they basically like looking at chat gpt are really good at planning and what if we connect them as an interface to ai models right and ai models here refers to models of computer vision audio and question and answering there's also like object detection all those things uh, quite a lot of models that have been included fun fact if you try to run this uh, <laughs> repository you have to download around 100 gigs of just model weights so that's like the ssd storage you lose out it's not the uh, graphic card ram but just to be able to run these you need a like crazy amount of storage um ecstasy saying best live while having dinner thanks ecstasy uh, i hope you follow that up with a chai i'll be ha- even happier after that comment um so what they've done is they've taken this ridiculous amount of um models which are vision models audio models question and answer models the cool thing is and i'll we'll, we'll look at the code in a minute but the cool thing is you can change these models and extend your task to whatever you want shrink it down to whatever you want so i am working on a demo and i invite any collaborators next week i'm thinking of building an ocr app where you can talk to the document and you can extract details because all of the historic ocr efforts have been to 
really understand what's in a document right so i'm thinking of what if we take like the best current ocr package connect that with chat gpt see what happens so that's a demo i'm working on uh, i invite any collaborators and that's the nice thing about this project it's really extensible so what happens is you ask chat gpt uh, or in this case jarvis can you describe me what's inside this image or can you uh, narrate to me what's inside the image it looks at your prompts and then it decides and acts based on your request so this is not just clever prompt engineering it's not just one paragraph that is being fed i have looked at the visual chat gpt that was just like uh, one single prompt that told the model okay you need to call certain um, tools in that case but in this case it's like a multi step prompting so there are multiple steps involved we'll just look at that and along with that there's a lot of clever structuring and loading of models so when you are structuring these models to chat gpt or you're making them available you also or the authors have downloaded the description of these models from hugging faces model cards and that helps it decide okay should i use this model is detr the correct uh, object detection model for example that's how this is going on a few words about like the current state of large language models they cannot process vision audio and videos they cannot handle multiple subtasks just by themselves so if you like ask it to do five things that involved a few tasks you'll have to think of some clever prompt engineering but then there are excellent these are excellent zero shot learners which means they have learned a lot of things to be able to perform really well on new tasks and in this case chat gpt is a great generalist but a bad specialist so it like can't be the best um let's say sentiment analyzer maybe you get the point that might not be the best example so we're working with these constraints in mind and based on that the authors have created this four step process as i pointed out earlier so the prompt is structured in a way that it helps chat gpt think of a task so it plans the task you take in the user input which i told was hey let's say like uh, what's in this image <laughs> i'm just looking at a comment um and in this case the, the model would look at my prompt it would say okay the user is asking to describe an image so it will take this image let's say it's looking at my camera right now and it will try to describe that by calling a model so it will plan the task after that it knows okay now i need to like do some description or uh, captioning based on the image right so it will select a model remember we had like fed in this fed in these like a uh, ridiculous amount of 100 gig models from that list you force chat gpt to select a single model and then execute the task on it now fourth is like one of the best part and this i think everyone should take notes from this in the sense that everyone should include this in their pipeline of generative ai uh, demos or models they also include the predictions that uh, chat gpt made so like they give you a trace of how the project thought of approaching the problem and you get an output of how it went around that so you can like see exactly what's going on it's not like oh it just magically happens so the four step process takes your input selects a model runs the model and gives you the output back also tells you what had happened there these are the settings for the authors i didn't change them at all in fact i ran into quite a bit of issues that's why i was like almost almost just in time to run this live stream i was trying to like switch out this to gpt4 and also do some interesting things but for today the demo you will see is based on 3.5 turbo which is the cheapest model uh, to run which means it might not be the best so uh, on obvious example can be you can switch this out to gpt4 if you have access and try that the uh, text davinci 003 model is also used and the temperature is set to zero this is like a really cool trick so for all of you who have been watching the live stream i'll mention something that's obvious to you all by setting the temperature to zero you reduce the creativity uh, of language model so you like make it less creative it usually sticks to whatever you care about without like being very creative or going off the rails that is important in this case because we just want to execute a task right 
so temperature is equal to 0 is quite helpful i personally didn't understand why the last setting is helpful but the authors highlighted it so i uh, thought it's worth including here's an example and after that we'll uh, dive into the code base and i'll point out how it's happening so let me zoom in a bit oh so i'm not able to pinch to zoom so i'll like um do this so i like manually scroll around this so here's a query uh, which asks based on the pose of example 1 which means this basketball player taking the dunk based on this pose and the description of the second image please generate a new image so here's the response of the model based on the pose of image 1 and description of this i have generated a new image for you see this was the fourth step that i told you about right which is like the best part it like literally tells you how it thought about and approached this so it called a pose net and then generated an image based on it so it took this image applied the pose to a boy riding a cycle which i assume might have been the description of this and you get this image through that so this is how this model works and it's been really popular in the field many people have been like uh quite impressed by it and quite simply it's it's not uh, rocket science but as you can see it's like very clever way of gluing all this together i'll highlight this funny comment while i switch screen sharing so i'm i'm thinking of doing something dangerous today which is sh sharing my entire screen <laughs> because i need to jump between vs code and back and forth So give me one second to minimize everything and do that real quick. Um, I need to show config YAML and I need to hide my OpenAI key from that. So that's what I'm doing right now. Cool. Uh, I have somewhat done that. So let's jump into it. Can someone please confirm if my Visual Studio code is visible to you all? And I think I exposed my API key there, so I need to I need to disable that now. I trust you all, uh, but I don't want to burn all my money. Give me one second to expire that key, please. See, this is what happens when you're doing a live demo. View API key, delete that. revoke key i think we're good everyone is saying yes um xtc is saying can't wait for the generative ai meet yeah i'm looking forward to it as well i haven't received a confirmation if i'm invited or not <laughs> so i'm just waiting on that hello rashmi thanks for joining us let me share my entire screen and please if i end up sharing my open ai key please don't use it cool this is the crux of it all right i pointed out the other things earlier here there's just like setting where you can call this model and ways it which port it's talking to this is the entire prompt so here's the first part of it the first is task planning stage and they tell it hey ai assistant you pass the user input for tasks and we have described the task like so so you tell it the task id you tell it the dependency you give it different arguments and the cool thing is later on all of this is handled by itself so the argument must be text image and audio nothing else and we pass it the entire list of things we can do here so you can do i'll i'll just like talk about a few but i won't mention them all you can do token classification tabular classification object detection image segmentation um audio classification speech recognition basically all of the like special models you can think of and then you tell it there may be multiple tasks of the same type think step by step parse out few tasks and ensure user is request can be resolved pay attention to the dependencies and order after that you make it select a model this is straightforward 
it calls a model uh, gets the output and then you ask it to share the logs with you that's it that's how this work this is the crux of it i'll give a demo now so what i'll do is uh, i've been doing some like funny examples as you can see here but uh, as li listening to songs by divine and what i ended up doing was i was asking it to generate raps based on an image so let's take a look at the image um it is somewhere here in demos in data in examples there we go so i'll probably use the giraffe image let's try this it's f.jpg and we can ask the i don't know i have disabled the key uh, thanks for pointing that out i knew i i showed it earlier and then i uh, revoked that thanks thanks for looking out aaron so i've just cleared the terminal and let me full screen this again so it welcomes you with this message welcome to jarvis uh, they have called it jarvis quite rightfully so because it can do a few things and i'll ask it a very simple question what is in the image example dot f dot jpg and we just looked at this image it's a bunch of giraffes and zebras so let's see if it gets it right what's happening right now is we've looked at the prompts chat gpt is being called it looks at my question looks at the list and answers the question first i used image captioning to perform however the inference result was an error so i used detr to do object detection there was an error so it looks like it did not get it right and let's take a look at why that happened got it so um it should have been examples that was my mistake not chat gpt chat gpt is never wrong everyone it's always the user <laughs> it's probably going to be trained on this data and i want to be nice to it let's try again uh, i apologize i was trying to run this in the web demo that they have but i couldn't get the gradio thing to work so uh, we're just stuck with this so it got it right the second time based on the results the image contains a herd of giraffes and zebras grazing in a field my workflow for your request is as follows first i use the model image captioning to generate a text and then it detected six objects and gave me the answer so pretty cool to see how this works right um let's try another one um let's try d can you generate an image of a dog based on the pose in examples slash d.jpg this is quite hard because it needs to call two different functions in this case right so the first one will be it will call posenet based on this i can actually hear my graphic card ramping up now uh, so it will call posenet extract the pose of this um short and then call stable diffusion to generate the image so it's like cause calling multiple steps of it let's see if it got it right the output is 2e1b so it didn't generate the dog in that pose but it got a child next to it in the exact same pose fair enough for this model i would say but let's see what happened behind the scenes it used control net to grab the pose and then i guess it called stable diffusion based on it somewhere i'm trying to find the exact log for it that's what happened behind the scenes let's try another example so let's try this one and let me quickly check the chat as this looking at um, the chat that's why you might have seen the infinite screen share sorry about that so i'm looking at example c.jpg and i want to answer the question of how many zebras are in there how many zebras do you see in example slash c dot jpeg let's see if it can get this one right like a famous issue of all of these is all of these models is it 
they can't do counting properly or they struggle with logic a bit but let's see if with uh, object detection we can make it better i can see there are two zebras in the image so it still didn't do well <laughs> and let's see what it did behind the scenes the generated image was the generated caption was two zebras standing in a field then i used object detection to detect the objects the model generated an image with the predicted boxes so let's take a look at the predicted boxes uh it is ecc6 so you can see this is a gotcha of the detection model right because the detection model only catches two zebras and not the third one i don't know what it's calling the third one but i i think it's missing up on that one so you can see it's like perfect it somewhat gives you an overview of how it's functioning but it's obviously not the best let's try again on this one um here is the zebra in examples slash p dot zebec i wish this was better formatted um but i tried to also do npm install for my for the first time in my life and i realized web developers have been like facing cond errors since the existence of time <laughs> so i couldn't get it to work as well um let's see what it did here the zebra is located in the center of the image to gen answer your request i used three models image to text object detection and visual question answering fair enough i would say a uh, good enough answer for me i will now um walk you through how this somewhat works inside the code base and let me point different things out real quick cancel the chart minimize that so this is about 600 lines of code and most of it you can tell when it's like so many imports something interesting is going to happen but most of it is defining these models for chat gpt so first of all they set up the api key look at some boilerplate code around that and all i want to point out is throughout this um code base they are doing a lot of things around handling the json file extracting the fields getting the responses but the main crux of it is once i find it these models so if task is let's say image classification you grab the url you grab the data and call the inference same for image to text and you basically define this for all possible models so you can see this is cv tasks here was nlp tasks and they basically mention all of these so they just handle the tasks call the function and return it the cool thing is main of most of the logic of like handling the user request and calling these models hand, handled by chat gpt so you get like this word from chat gpt and after that it's just if else and you get the response which is passed back to the user so you can read through this but most of it is defining all of uh, these code files and setting the paths to them basically how much time did you spend reading the papers and looking through the code so i showed you my nice app earlier i i should have done that i should have like um used that app to describe the code base but i like read this paper for two days uh the code was pretty straightforward since i've seen a uh, visual chat gpt so it took me like an hour to wrap my head around it 3 hours to download the model weights on like a really fast internet 3 hours to <laughs> basically load in the models i'm just catching up on the chat really quick Aaron had pointed out my keyboard showing. Thanks for that. AI is going to replace them and eat the jobs, and it can't even get the captions right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So next, we'll take a look at the paper. And thanks to everyone that pointed out my key was exposed. I have revoked that.
if it's not you have like 45 minutes of the live stream to try and see if that works i will i will revoke it after that but i found like uh, the api to be really cheap so uh, obviously i talk a lot to chat gpt i spend like i run out of the 25 message limit in like a few minutes and then i go to playground and use that so i have like not crossed 50 dollars a month yet which i think like is really cheap given how much like it's already doing for all the prompts i'm giving it so now i'll point out different sections inside the paper again the paper is hugging gpt solving ai tasks with chat gpt so they start by saying while there are many ai models and ai models here refers to the mini models we had looked so captioning models uh, text to image image to text posenet all those models i'm sure you know of it available for different domains and modalities they cannot handle complicated tasks and then they say llms can handle general reasoning really well but they can't handle this task so they like do this handshake where they're combining both of them so they're using chat gpt to conduct task planning when receiving a user request select the model according to their function and execute each sub task that is what's happening in this case then they give an introduction of the llm landscape and what's happening here they say despite the successes of llms there are some urgent challenges the first one is they are limited to user input and output in text but they cannot do other things like vision and speech the second one is some complex tasks uh that includes sub tasks cannot be handled really well the third is they demonstrate excellent zero shot learning but aren't really good specialists after that there were quite a few things to point out from here but we've already looked at the code so i've given you an overview of that just to recap let's take a look at the image which will again summarize it so you take llm as a controller so you send it the input it plans the task based on that selects the model calls the models based on that gathers the prediction back from them so this is the first step where it takes the input it looks at the input and sends it to the models calls how many ever models it's supposed to all of them send its outputs back to chat gpt these models execute all of these things in the background so let's say uh, you ask it to describe what's inside the image all of them are called sequentially that's like one of the drawbacks currently so they get executed sequentially once that is done all of this is sent back to chat gpt and it gives you a response based on all of this data my best uh, my favorite thing about this paper is it also gives you a reasoning of how it went about different things so you can like see it struggle with prompts for example i had asked it earlier ecstasy was lucky to see uh, divine at zoma land but i asked it to write a rap in the style of a rapper about an image what it ended up doing was it wrote the rap and then generated an audio file i had not asked it to generate an audio file but its reasoning um sort of told me okay i like now it makes sense why it went around that uh, path but it shouldn't have that was my point so that is like really cool to see that you can also like um, look at what's going on and why is it going on So from here they talk about related works and here they mention like a key thing which is in italics uh italics 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 sorry you ask it to think step by step and this is like a really famous prompt for chat gpt as well right describe it step by step come up with your reasoning and explain it to me please so when you ask chat gpt to do to do this it's like always sharing how it's going about that after that you can see some papers some papers are mentioned a uh, lot of extra 
things around different architectures is mentioned that's not relevant to us so i'm skipping past it you're here to get a condensed version of the paper if you wanted to read it i'm sure you would have read it by yourself in this time so these are the four steps and again all papers have this structure where things usually end up getting repeated so i'll repeat it again the llm passes the user request decomposes it into tasks distributes the task to expert models the expert models run it and the llm summarizes the task for us that is it basically for this paper and after that they show you multiple examples of how it works how it does different things you can look at this table uh, i'm not going to read all of them but since this is on youtube pause the video read through these if you want it can do all of these things right now you're welcome to read through it if you like after that they describe how different things are happening what's going on here they've shared the prompt again so a uh, main <laughs> secret sauce of this paper was the prompt as well where you ask it to think step by step you ask it to only call from the selection list of your models and then you ask it to tell you why it went about selecting some tasks that's the simplified version of it you also ask it to like run it in like uh, a json format so this is the secret of prompt engineering right the ai assistant can pass tasks like so so you take the task task id and dependency and arguments and you look at the available task list so you're like asking it to take a look at a python list which is cool right you can like use chat gpt api to look at python list and also the descriptions of these models from there you're like literally hand holding it and telling it okay you call the task like so uh, you execute it like so you look at the list of candidate models like so and from here you also take a look at metadata so a lot of the secret happens through the api <laughs> in this case if i may most of the other ideas inside the paper show you how good it is and different examples i've given you enough examples to like give you an overview so let's see if there's anything else otherwise it might be a shorter one um I guess one important thing that I didn't mention earlier was all of the models we've looked at are from Hugging Face Hub, and they have a really nice model card with descriptions. So you're also feeding that to the API and using that to make a decision, which is like a key part of why it works really well. Most of the researchers or anyone who uploads their models to Hugging Face provides like a really nice. model card with a lot of details around it so that is also pretty uh, important in making these decisions or helping chat gpt make these decisions i guess that's pretty much it i'll read through the conclusion once more and i'll answer the questions i can take your prompts if anyone like wants me to do a few interesting things through jarvis we can do that basically they proposed a new system called hugging gpt to solve specialized tasks the llm acts as the interface and it connects uh, to all of these models so that is the secret sauce of it now i will catch up with the chat real quick and i'll also announce h2ai's event so for all of you in bangalore uh, we're doing a event a conference in bangalore on the 19th all of you are invited in fact xtc since you've been so active i'll send you a free coupon uh, to join us in person so please dm me anywhere and i'm happy to share the coupon code with you for anyone else interested here is the link to the conference if you are excited about generative ai you can expect some really interesting announcement there i can't say much but i will like point this much out that we have a lot of the top kaggle grand masters here and when you bring so many amazing people together uh, they can do incredible things in generative ai so you can expect some very very interesting announcements there 
uh, the event is free if you want to join virtually so you can sign up and watch the live stream it will probably be live streamed if others of you are in bangalore you can probably reach out to me and i can see if i can share more coupons but xcc please dm me anywhere and i'd be happy to share one with you so let me catch up on the chat now what are the downloadable versions of best llms which can be used on in house data uh, maverick this is a bit of a tricky question because a lot of these have been trained on fine tuned on llama weights which had a non commercial usage clause so it's i am not a lawyer but i think it's uh, best to wait for a better open source model the recent specialist llm model came across was bloomberg uh xtc i had done a live stream on it last weekend so similar to this although i didn't get to demo it since i can't uh train a finance llm if you go to live tab you will find a reading group on bloomberg gpt if you want to watch that i think i also linked it in the description under the like button can you comment on grounding llm versus modularizing like jarvis i think modularizing is a better approach at least from my perspective because like unless you're working with very specific use case so like you only care about finance related questions you could probably look at something like bloomberg gpt but even then i don't see why you wouldn't use like modules inside of it right so let's say not financial advice hypothetical situation i have to say these things i have to say these things to avoid trouble but let's say you have a bunch of documents and you're using a llm to analyze that so you can say okay look at this scanned pdf and give me like some suggestions or some strategies some investment strategies based on that so the llm can't look at the document it would call a visual question answering model based on it and you derive the info from that now the llm has the info to work with and give you investment strategies so my my opinion right now is uh, modularizing is pretty good how to make your own llm it's it's really expensive to do that right now i mean you could fine tune using a uh, lora training approach but for that you need like a really good model to start with in my opinion i want to attend uh, just please dm me anywhere i'm happy to share a coupon with you as well maverick so please uh, just dm me on any platform cool uh, so that was hugging gpt thanks for joining everyone here some suggested homework for you if you spend the time watching this prana i'll just look at your comment if you watch this video share the summary of the paper on twitter or linkedin i think it's a really good way to refine your understanding as well and i'd be very happy to amplify that so if you'd like to tag me uh it also in my opinion sends a signal to the world that you're also learning about all of this and people also start recognizing you as someone who's knowledgeable in that um i mentioned some ideas that i am working on so if you would like to collaborate on that uh, please reach out to me consider subscribing i'll keep doing these nlp live streams at least for a for for the while when we keep getting six papers every day i <laughs> i'll have nice options to select from so you can subscribe if you're interested and finally it's cool to uh, catch up with everything but also remember to take breaks because there's there's a nice overflow of all of these things and uh, with time things settle down you get you get a hang of what's working well i'll give one example not to criticize uh, heavily but a few weeks ago visual chat gpt was really popular but if you look at the code it's like a very simple approach now hugging gpt is the successor of that in a way in my opinion and it does the same things but better and like more wider tasks right so you're not missing out anything uh, i'll keep live streaming you can watch these videos if you want but you don't need to keep up with every single paper is what i'm trying to say any thoughts on nlm trained on medical data i haven't read medical palm uh, paper 
now there are two things right because no one has done this properly so far no one like no one knows how to answer this question right like what happens when you fine tune a model to your target data that works really well for resnet for t5 for bert for whatever and it should work for better for a llm so like if we have a really good open source model in the future you can just fine tune that and use it everywhere has anyone got an access to plugins not that i am aware of i am also asking friends uh, if they have access but i have not what you can do maverick in the meantime is langchain is like a really good framework for it's basically plugins before even plugins came out so take a look at langchain i'll be starting a study group around this once i wrap up one time back from h2 world so i think i might see you there and once i'm back i plan to do a study session around this i'm actually i just spoke to the found to the founding team recently and they will also be joining me so we'll this time we'll be doing like a fast ai style uh, study group where i'll show you implementations and we'll take a look at that and then i'll teach you the concepts so if you've been following what i've been sharing on twitter that's why i've been like working on all of these small app ideas if you paid attention to archive chat i'd use langchain there and it was basically your langchain demo and i'm i'm quite literally learning in public about all of these things it's literally if you take a power nap or new paper comes up yeah basically it's that um okay interesting to know that microsoft is also working on that cool uh, i think we can wrap up thanks for watching everyone i hope uh, you got a nice summary of hugging gpt uh if anyone is interested in collaborating on ideas uh, please reach out maverick and ecstasy please dm me anywhere and i'd be happy to share a coupon with you everyone is welcome to watch the uh, live stream uh, live there'll be many exciting announcements around generative ai that's what i've been told i can't say more <laughs> i i know what's what's going to be announced but uh, i'm not allowed to say yet need a session on deepmind gato I'll check it out. Thanks for putting it on my radar. Cool. I'll see everyone next week. Uh thanks for joining me.